Welcome to Late Night with the Pastor. So glad you could join me this evening. And this evening I'm going to talk about a great topic I think every Christian needs to hear. It's about avoiding Satan's snares. It's, we have a devil who is a liar. We have a devil who is an accuser of the brethren. We have a devil who disguises himself as an angel of light. And there is a real spiritual warfare. There is real battle going on. And we need to take up our armor of God. We need to go to the front lines and battle as soldiers of Christ. And he has given us every weapon to prosper. He has given us everything that we need for godliness. And he... He's with us. He's fighting right beside us. He is in us and he fights through us. So I want to encourage you today to keep on fighting this good fight of faith. Keep on fighting the good fight because the Lord, the King of Heaven's armies, he's going to be giving us this power through his Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost power, the Pentecostal power in us. And, he, and we're going to do battle with the evil. We're going to do battle with darkness. And, and we could only do it through the Lord's strength. For he says, greater is in me than he who is in the world. And we just need to activate it to a new level. And know that the Lord is with us wherever we go. So we do not have to fear. We do not have to tremble. And you know one thing though. Satan trembles when God's people pray and get their prayer closets and they commune with the Lord. And that's where we gain our strength from when we go into our prayer closets and just seek out the Lord. And I'm so excited today about today's message that the Lord has given me for you. Avoiding Satan's snares. If you have a Bible, you can turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to go ahead and read verses 8 in 9. Again, it's 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 through 9. And I want to encourage you if you're watching this video, give us a like, you know, share a comment. If you have a prayer request, please share that in the comments with us today and I would love to hear from from you. I would love to pray with you. And again, it's from 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. He says, "Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. To paraphrase verse 8, he says, Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Now, first point I want to make is that we don't need to stray. Don't stray. Because what the Psalm 119 says, it says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. And Christians sometimes, they neglect their prayer life. They neglect speaking with the Lord. They neglect reading God's word, which Hebrews 4, 12 describes as living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing as far as joint to marrow, soul and spirit, and is able to discriminate the true thoughts and intentions of our hearts. God tells us that we are to pray what? Pray without season. That's where the battlefield is fought and won. It is through prayer when God's people get on their knees and plead the blood of Christ over every situation that they are going through. And sometimes, Christians, we neglect our prayer life. We fail to study God's word as we should. And when we do this, we begin to stray. We begin to walk off that narrow road that the Lord has on or in our lives. And some of us, we lack the courage to say to non-Christian friends, we lack the courage to, you know, just keep on walking the walk and talking the talk. And the book of James tells us that he wants us to be doers of his word and not just hearers. And sometimes as new Christians, we can yield to our old self, our old lives. But what does the Apostle Paul tell us in the book of Corinthians? He tells us, that we have been made new. We have been made new. We have been made a new creation 
in Christ Jesus. The old has gone and the new has come. Hallelujah. We can praise his holy name because we are not like we were before, but we are made new in Christ Jesus. We have been risen from the dead. We have become spiritual alive. We have been born again. The blood of Jesus covers all. The blood of Jesus covers all our sins. It covers all our mistakes. And we can trust in His blood because it's His blood that we get the power from. And we must guard our devotional lives diligently. We need to soak up His word and just dine at His table and just feast on whatever He has for us. We must draw from His well of life daily and we must take our stand for God boldly because we are in the time when Christians are being attacked. We're in the time where there is persecution coming for the Christian in America and we need to stand up for our faith. We need to stand up for our morals. We need to stand up for the voiceless. We need to be a voice to the voiceless. We need to be a hope to the hopeless. We need to be father figures to the father this because there are so many broken homes in our country today and God is raising up a band of soldiers he is raising up a generation that will just seek his face like nothing else where he will be the top priority because either Jesus is Lord of all or Jesus isn't Lord at all in our life he tells us he wants us to love him with all our heart all our strength all our mind all for everything and to just give him everything because he, he deserves our everything. Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins. He went to the cross. He was beaten beyond recognition. People couldn't even recognize him because he was beaten and bluttered so badly. And he went to the cross and he died for your sins. For your sins. For your sins. Do you get that? He died for your sins sins so that you may have life in him but the good news is when he died on the cross three later three days later three days later three days later he rose from the dead and defeated death and is seated at the right hand of the father in glory hallelujah 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 praise the lord for that that he didn't stay in the grave but he rose from the dead in victory. Our victory is in the blood of Jesus and his resurrection power. And he said the same things that he did, the same power that rose him from the dead is available in us who call upon his name and are saved by the blood of Jesus. And he calls us as Christians to fight this good fight of faith, to just Lean on him, not lean on our own understanding, but acknowledge God in all our ways. To put his kingdom first. We can't put his kingdom first if we're so wrapped up in ours. We need to die to ourselves and die daily. And pick up our cross and really truly follow him. And I'm not talking about a cultural Christian. I'm not talking about a lazy Christian who might think they can just go to church on Sunday mornings and live like the world Monday through Saturday. No, no, no. He wants us to be fully His. Like a sign that I seen on a church one day. He doesn't want just weekend visitation. He wants full custody. He wants us to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. We must guard our devotional life and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. As the book of James tells us. And also, he wants us to not strut, to don't strut. As Proverbs 16 to 18 says. It says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. And some and most Christians, we lack humility, the desire in the praise and honor of people rather than the approval of God. We would rather offend God than offend man. Amen. Amen. He wants us to have the spirit of humility. He wants us to have a spirit where we are servants 
of him, of his church, and of his kingdom. And I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, true humility isn't thinking less of yourselves, but it's thinking the most out of other people. And we have Jesus, Jesus Christ, our greatest example. He was humble. He showed him a spirit of humility. He washed the disciples' feet. He declared that he could do nothing by himself, but he depended on the Father. He depended on the Father. He said he and the Father are one and he pleased his Father. We too, we must be humble people. We must be humble Christians to avoid Satan's snare and avoid Satan's grip and avoid Satan's power. Avoid Satan altogether. And we need to resist the devil and he will flee from us and we will please God by giving him first place in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Amen. And I just want to encourage you at this time to like or comment and let me know that you are watching with us. And we're talking about how to avoid Satan's snares. And we don't strut and we don't think we're all of that and we also don't stoop because Romans 12 11 says what? It says be not overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. And the morals of our world are at an all-time low. We see violence, we see alcohol, drugs, pornography, racism. We see all kinds of wickedness and all kinds of evil. But God continues to encourage us through His Word not to walk after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. And millions and millions and millions of people have relaxed on their moral standards because they are spiritually sick. They have this sickness and this disease called sin in their hearts. And Christ wants to take that disease. He wants to heal them from that cancer. He wants to heal them from that disease called sin in their hearts. And Christians must not condemn evil. Christians must not allow evil. But we are to overcome evil with good. Assist them with those who are less fortunate. Who don't know Christ. Who are lost in darkness. And we need to help them and guide them and share the gospel, share the good news with them that Jesus came to die for their sins. And he has paved the way for their salvation, for them to be with the Father. And Jesus is the only way, folks. The Buddha isn't a way. Muhammad isn't the way. Oprah isn't the way. Dr. Phil isn't the way. Only Jesus Christ is the way he is the only way to the father he is the way the exclusive way the only way there is no other way except jesus christ and his blood that covers all our sin it's all because of the blood of jesus and we don't talk about the blood of jesus nearly enough and we need to be bold and we need to be courageous in our faith because what does Joshua say he says do not fear or be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you and then all through scripture it tells us that we are not to fear 365 times in the Bible it says do not fear one time for every day and God tells us that he has not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind and he says his perfect love casts out all fear because God is love and there is no fear in love and also we're not supposed to stoop but we're also not supposed to stop either because Matthew 10 22 it says but he that endures he that endures to the end will be saved it says not not the one who endures until they face a uh, death in their family will be saved. It doesn't say the one who endures until they disagree with somebody will be saved. It doesn't say that the one who endures until 40 years old will be saved. It says the one who endures to the end will be saved. He wants us 
to persevere through life trials and circumstances and some of us have made a good start we have started off the race well but then we come to this bad stop in the Christian life and Satan attracts and Satan distracts and he attacks us through his slyness and sickness and no problem though is too difficult no trial is too severe no burden is too heavy for Christ not to lift off your shoulders with God's help his grace is enough his grace is sufficient for you it is more than enough and God is more than a match for Satan and we are conquerors through him who gives us strength who gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding so we need to avoid Satan's snares we need to avoid Satan's traps and I remember a long time ago, about 10 years ago, I was going through one of the most difficult times in my life and I decided to go on a walk late at night and I started walking on the sidewalk and I was just thinking and and just praying out loud and, and asking the Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? I feel so empty, I feel so alone, I don't know which way to turn, Lord. And I remember I just moved out of my mom's house and I moved into my own apartment. And I was just seeking out the Lord's will for my life. I know he had more for me. And I remember walking on that sidewalk at that late night and that late hour, it being so cold and frosty and I was just shivering. And I was just empty and I felt so dry inside and I know you know what I'm talking about there's dry seasons and I said Lord just take my life take whatever you want for me then about five minutes later I remember seeing this big light behind me so I slowly turn around and I see this car just <laughs> come and smack me and I start tumbling and I roll about 300 feet and I remember I'm reciting Psalm 23 you know just kept on saying that Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd now I was so I was in so much shock and disbelief and I just couldn't believe what just happened to me I was struck by a vehicle that was going at least 40 miles an hour and I remember laying in that road reciting Psalm 23 and I remember just looking up my leg and it was twisted like a pretzel. And I was wondering if I was going to meet my maker that day. And then I remember that ambulance coming and taking me away. And I remember the doctors just snapping my leg back in place. And the months after that, I spent about three or four months alone at my apartment and I just remember just pleading and asking and begging God and telling him to just do whatever he wants with me that I am fully his that I will do whatever he asks of me and I remember not too long ago before I got hit by that car and I had this huge accident that really shook my life and shook me to the core. I remember going to a church service and this girl who was said she couldn't see in the physical realm but she could see in the spiritual realm and she said she could see demons all around me trying to prevent me from my predestined ministry. And I just want to encourage you to avoid Satan's snare and be in the safety net of God who is our refuge and strength and our help in times of trouble. And if you've been blessed by this video, I encourage you to share it with your friends and family and comment and let me know you're watching by just giving me a like. That would be a real encouragement to me. And you have, if you have any questions, just feel free to message me.